I'd ask mm-hmm. about your dad. Yeah, absolutely. I'd ask about your brothers. I'd ask about home life. I, yeah. I, I don't have a problem with I that. I ask about your intentions. Hey, you're going to make a lot of money. Um, what are you going to do? What's the first thing you're going to buy? Are you going to be bringing a bunch of people with you? I want to know if you're going to be a football guy or if you're going to be a guy who's going to be out partying and hanging out. Um, you know, I want to know these things because, you know, like we said, giving you money – at a young age and access to a lot of different things is only going to enhance who, who you, you really true. are. Alcohol and money exactly. makes you more of what you are. Exactly. And, of, I, yeah. and, and I said it a thousand times. I got married 10 days after I turned 21, and I was drafted at 20. And so I played my rookie season at 20, and in November I turned 21. I got married in the November. But – my wife saved my life because being in Atlanta and being a young guy oh my God. in Atlanta with a lot of money and that whole just – Oh, yeah. The culture in Atlanta at that time, it was – I mean, it, it was amazing. I would have lost my mind. I had an older brother who came down there with me who was two years older than me. And, I mean, he was out every night. He, oh, he was out every night. He was having a good time. And so I'm, I'm looking at him and I'm like, you know – had I not had a wife, I'd have probably been out with him too. Wait, wait. Best looking but people it would a- have hindered yes. my growth as a player yes. and as a person. Yes, I am. Six kids later. Yeah, six yeah, years later. The best looking people in America are in L.A. and Atlanta. Yeah. Let me tell you something. Miami got some good ones too. Vegas? Ve- Vegas, they're all transplants from somewhere else yeah. though. They're but all from No one LA really grows up in Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> but everyone lives in Vegas. Yeah. Um, okay, so the Seahawks basically gave away Michael Bennett. Yeah. What does that tell you? Gave him away. And by the way, he's not in his prime, but he yeah. can still ball. Yeah. Gave, him, gave away. him away. You know, I initially wanted to, you know, I wanted, I just wanted to know more about the situation and more about what was going on in that locker room because I didn't follow it. I was too busy trying to follow our locker room and making sure we were, you know, trying to do everything we needed to try to win games. But the more I just sit back and look at it, um, you know, the point you made yesterday about, uh, you know, Pete Carroll having that, that lifespan at USC and things falling apart. And now, you know, being in Seattle, it kind of feels the same way. Um, I tend to buy into that. I tend to buy into maybe, you know, guys believe in Pete and they follow Pete and they know how nice and just how coach, how player friendly he is. And they just take advantage and keep taking advantage. And I think Pete, I think he knows that as well. And he's just kind of like, man, you know, I've, kind of help cultivate this monster. And so I I can't rein them back in. Right. I got to just let that, them go. See, that's what I think, Because I can't rein them in. Like, I, I told him he can do this. I told him, hey, be you. I want you to be as, as, as vocal as you want to be. I want you to, you know, advocate for your causes, and we're behind you. And then I just think, every, you know, everybody's throwing everything in, and it's just so much that it's like, look, guys, if we don't start to get a handle on this, you know, we're already in a bad place now. And so I just think, you know. Coaching's like parenting. You can start tough and lighten up. Oh, yeah. But you can't start giving kids ice cream for breakfast and then go tough. They'll be like, that's not tough. Oh, uh, that's my wife's problem. She's too nice. And, and now, so- now the kid's taking advantage <laughs> of her. Yep, 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 yep. Coaching is a little bit like, how many coaches have you had in the NFL? Oh, gosh. Four or five head coaches? A lot. I think more than that. I had, I, I had three just in Atlanta. One minute three, left. Four, five, Is there six, seven, one eight. that you felt players took advantage of? I think I took advantage of Jim Moore. You Jim did? Moore Jr. I was Jim's first draft pick. We shared the same birthday. Uh, I was a DB. He was a DB guy. Um, and we just had a special relationship, and I took advantage of it. Being 20 years old, Jim was, you know, w- you know we're going to a team event. And Jim would say, hey, everybody on the team bus. And I'm like, man, I got a new Ferrari. I'm riding my Ferrari. Ooh. And instead of Jim saying, man, get your butt on the bus. And the vet's already mad. And so instead of doing that, Jim hops in the car with me. Oh, boy. <laughs> you know, I'm sitting in the front of the bus. The vet's like, man, get your butt in the back. And I'm like, all right. And then somebody, hey, nah, leave him alone. He can sit wherever he yeah. want to sit. Yeah. And so, yeah, yeah no. that's not very good. I appreciate your honesty. D'Angelo Hall, multiple-time Pro Bowler, going to become a broadcaster hopefully sooner than later. Good having you in the show. Hour 3 coming up from Los Angeles. This is The Herd. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from our other shows on FS1.